Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. I do want to remind you that uh, today is going to be the Style Up Party uh, for my wife's uh, business, Ashira Clips. You can go to ashira.greatdetectives.net to take part in the party and for full details, and that will be at 7 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Eastern. So I encourage you to check that out uh, tonight. Uh, well, we're going to get now into It's a Crime, Mr. Collins. Uh, it's a Crime, Mr. Collins was, in many ways, it was a rebranded version of the NBC series, uh, The uh, Adventures of the Abbots from 1955, which we played way back in Season 2. Uh, though we did play one episode during our uh, listener's uh, choice countdown. Um, and essentially, the only thing from that series involving Greg and uh, Gene Abbott uh, that was particular to the books that uh, by Francis uh, Crane, who created the Abbots, was just those uh, characters. Uh, and so, uh, essentially, they took a lot of the scripts and the overall style of the series uh, to the Mutual Network, uh, with even like the same opening, uh, but with different characters. In the USA, uh, the, uh, the series, uh, premiered in August of 1956, and it starred Gail Collins as Gail Collins, uh, with, uh, Mandel Kramer playing her husband, Greg. That series ran for uh, uh, 29 weeks, uh, and we don't actually have any of those episodes in circulation. What we do have is the Australian uh, version of the series, uh, which starred uh, Keith uh, Eden as Greg Collins and Mary Disney as uh, Gail Collins. And we'll talk a little bit about Mr. Eden. Uh, I think next week, uh, the uh, very little information I could find out on Mary Disney. Uh, but we have essentially the Australian version. And thankfully, we have the first episode of that uh, Australian series, which was f- ran for 52 weeks. So, yeah, ran 23 weeks longer than the American series. All right, the original air date on this one is March the 4th. 1957, and this one is The Brown Paper Bag. One brief warning as we listen to this episode is that there is a term used which is quite offensive by modern standards, although the original meaning of the term is explained in the episode, just giving you that warning. It's a crime, Mr. Collin. It surely is. After all, what would you do if a gang of professional killers broke up your wedding night? That's exactly what happened. We hadn't been married ten minutes when... Well, maybe I'd better go back a bit to when I first met Greg. You see, my husband is a private detective... I'm Gail Collins, and I'll be back in a minute to set the stage for our puzzling crime. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. Now, Mrs. Collins, what did you mean when you said a gang of killers broke up your wedding night? That's exactly what happened, Mr. Little. It scared the daylights out of me. I don't ever remember... Now, 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 just a minute. You were going to tell how you first met Greg Collins. Oh, yes, I was. You kind of fell for that guy like the proverbial ton of bricks, didn't you, Gail? I certainly did. (laughs) I knew Greg was for me from the first minute he walked into my curio shop back in New Mexico. Greg's tall, lean, slightly on the western side. And I took one look at him and said to myself... This is it. I love that man. (laughs) After we'd met, Greg went to Mexico City on a secret assignment for the U.S. government. I guess you know he's a private detective. 
And a darn good one, too. Oh, you're right. But sometimes he does special jobs for the government. Greg called me from Mexico City and proposed over the phone. So I flew down and we were married. Then we ran to one of those dreamy honeymoon cabanas at the Hotel Dos Reyes. Well, like the man says, we're alone at last, Craig. Uh Uh-huh. That's right, girl. Well? I, uh... I think I'll take a cold shower. That didn't bother me. I knew Greg would be out soon, grinning like mad, having drowned himself in that Tweedy shaving lotion he knew I liked so much. So, Greg started to take his shower. And to sing. (laughs) I sprawled on the shades, feeling languid and Marilyn Monroe-ish. After all, Mother had forgotten to tell me what to do about gangsters who break up a girl's wedding night. But there I was on the chaise when... Yes? Who is it? Oh, one second. Yes. What did you want? Take... Take this. The paper bag? What for? Who are you? Now, look, Buster, if this is a gag because we just got married... Yeah, I was... uh... Oh. Have we uh, visited... I don't know who he is, Greg, but I think he's awfully drunk. Take a bag. Look, I don't want your paper bag, and besides... Della Turner. Get to her quickly. Della Turner? What bag's there? Murdering. Murdering? Head gang, where is it? Singing watch. Look out, Gail. Well... They certainly run this hotel nicely when an old souse can come into your cabana, play games, and pass out on the floor. He wasn't drunk, Gail. See? In his back. A knife? Let me have a closer look at him. Here. Take this bag he gave me. I don't want to touch it. Put it on the dresser. Uh huh. He's dead all right. Did you hear what he said, Craig? Murdering Della Turner, wet packs, head ring, wear a singing watch. I heard. Well, don't just stand there. Do something, darling. Do something clever. You're supposed to be a detective, remember? I am going to do something. What? Going to get dressed. Did he mean Della Turner, the famous actress? Sure. She's stopping here in town for Goodwill Day. She's playing over at the Teatro Australis. Is that where we're going, Greg? That's it. Now, let's see what's in that paper bag he gave you. Well, don't just whistle. What's in it? Popcorn? No. Pretzels? No. What's in it? A million dollars. Oh, it takes you so long to answer a girl. You... A million dollars? Just about. Well, I... I... What are we going to do? Me? You're going to find a clean shirt. You take a look at our friend on the floor, meantime. Tell me what you see. Well, he's kind of bald. Looks about 40, I'd say. Do I have to do this, Greg? Yes, go on. Don't be so squeamish. I'm not squeamish. I'm just sensitive, that's all. I'm the sensitive type. Go on. He has a funny mark on his nose. You know what happens when you wear glasses with a metal nose piece? Good. Now you're thinking a little. A little? Well, I like that. Hurry up, Gail. Where's that confounded bow tie? It was in this dresser. He's bruised. Looks like he was in a fight. Look for my bow tie with the orange polka dots, huh? I'll go ahead taking inventory on our visitor. All right. I wasn't enjoying myself much anyway. Orange polka dots, huh? Uh, weighs about uh, 150 pounds. About five feet seven. Fingers have calluses on them. Oh, well, that's... Turn him over and get a better look. <clears throat> I'll open his coat. And... Oh, I beg your pardon. What's the matter? What are you doing with his coat? Buttoning it up. Our friend is wearing nothing under his coat but underwear shorts. Maybe he was playing strip poker. 
Fancy overcoat he has. Label says Elite Fashions, New York. Well, here's your bow tie. Greg, what kind of danger do you think Della Turner's in? Do you think some gangsters might want to, well, to kill her? I don't know. I'd well, better get to that theater where she's playing and tell her what's happened. What are you doing with the money? I'll keep it in my briefcase. Let's get out of here. But it's... it's our wedding night, I know. But if we don't reach Della Turner in the next few minutes... What do we do with him on the floor? It's not very neat to have a corpse lying around and the maid doesn't show up till morning. Wetbacks. Yes, Mr. Collins, what is a wetback? Lots of very poor Mexicans trying to make a buck sneak across the Rio Grande to work on the farms in California and Texas. Lots of crooked characters are willing to help them do it for cash. Especially if the wetbacks will bring a little marijuana or uncut heroin along with him. We... Wait, listen. What is it? Someone's outside, Greg. Let's call the police. We can't. We have to reach Della Turner before somebody knocks her off. She probably knows something about a ring that's smuggling wetbacks across the border. If we call the police, how do we explain this? We're strangers in town. Unidentified body in our room. We lose hours. Might never convince him. By that time, Della Turner might be dead. <gasps> Maybe that's the police. No. I think that's the gentleman who put a knife into our friend there. And I wouldn't like to take a chance on his meeting us either. Come on. There's back window. Uh, up you go. Now, uh, run to the plaza and find a cab. Oh, Greg. Oh, what's the matter now? The nighty girl gets married. Her groom always carries her across the threshold. And what does mine do? He throws me out the window. Well, Gail Collins, this is your life. Keep your ears pinned, friends. We'll be back in a minute with more of the story. <coughs> Greg and I dashed to the plaza to find a taxi. Well, he dashed. He and his college track medals. I puffed along a very unimpressive second. After about five minutes of frantic waving, we grabbed a cab. It was an easy 12 miles to town. Teatro Australia, Soprano. Si, senor. Oh, we'll be entertained. He has the radio on. Aquí es la oh, I wish I understood esta Spanish. Noche. Un cuerpo de hombres en identidad se halla en cabaña del Hotel de los Reyes. Wow. Uchuchillo fue puesto en su espalda. What is saying, Greg? It's a news broadcast. Unidentified body found at the Hotel Dos Reyes. Oh, Greg. In a cabana. A man with a knife in his back. La policia está buscando el señor y señora Collins. How do you like that? Señor First time in my life I ever heard my name on the air and I don't know what he's saying about me. Translated, Greg. Wait. La señora tiene cabello negro. Ojos verdes. Es muy hermosa. They're describing you, Gail. Black hair, green eyes. Very pretty. That's on account of the room clerk. From the way he looked at me, any time you want to throw me over, Greg Collins, that room clerk's willing to catch me at the first bounce. La señora tiene buenas muy guapas. También. They're saying you have beautiful legs, Gail. Well, of course they are. Turn off the radio. But they're reciting poetry about me. They... Turn it off. Oh, but why? That cab driver would hear it. He can get a pretty good look at us in that rearview mirror. <laughs> He's too busy going the wrong way. This isn't the way we went down to town this morning. All right. This isn't the road to town, driver. You're going the wrong way. Oh, that is all right. I'm taking a shortcut. You wanted to save time, did you not? Uh, okay. Oh, oh my goodness. What is it? I just realized. The driver. He spoke to us in fairly good English. And how many cab drivers in Mexico City speak English that way? It doesn't mean he's a phony, though. He's stopping the car. Hey, wait a minute, pal. Oh, I wish we had a gun. I have a gun. But I'd have to use it myself. Now, the two of you, get out of the car. Come on. Uh, I'll take that briefcase, Mrs. Collins. Oh, should I let him have it, Greg? Yeah. He... Thank you, Mrs. Collins. You gave him something, Gail. So now I'll give him something, too. Oh! Man, what 
whatever right you've got. There'll be no fights in our family. Uh, we'll leave him there. Somebody will find him. I'll take back the briefcase. Now we'll borrow that cab of his. That little interruption may have cost us Della Turner's life. Here. Now hop in. I'll drive. Do you know the way, Greg? Yeah, I think so. Well, we don't dare to stop and ask for directions. That police alarm for us must be all over town. I wish I could step on it, but I, I don't dare attract attention. Cross your fingers, Gail. Here we go. When we reached the theater, the performance was on. Greg bought two tickets, reserved seats at the box office. Then, instead of going in, he dragged me to the stage door. Could we please see Miss Turner? I am sorry, Miss Turner is on stage. Oh, jeepers. Now look, if I give you a note for her, would you see that she gets it? Oh, see, si, senor, I can do that. Ah, good, here. And this is very confidential. So be sure that Miss Turner gets it, would you? No one else. Uh, si, senor. Uh, thanks. Come on, Gail, we'll go out front. What did you write on the note? I told her we must see her right away, that she's in great danger and that's very urgent. And I put down our seat numbers. Now, let's go. Don't go away. In just a minute, we'll bring you the climax of the case. Greg and I took our seats in the theater. Della Turner was just leaving the stage as we sat down. There she goes now. Greg! Oh, isn't she exquisite? Isn't that dress a dilly? This isn't a fashion show, pal. Someone's going to be killed any minute. Keep your eyes on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an important announcement to make. I am sorry to tell you that Mr. Desmond Monash, our very popular violinist, cannot play for us tonight. Oh. Mr. Monash had a most unfortunate accident. However, since this is Goodwill Day, we did want you to meet him, if only for a moment. He will be leaving for the States tonight, but he has very kindly consented to come out on stage and say hello. Now, here he is, Desmond Monash. Oh. Boy, Greg, he didn't just have an accident. He must have been in a battle royal. Look at him. Face all bandaged, his arm in that sling. Gail, yeah, we have to get out of here. And now, on with the this show! This place isn't as healthy as I thought it was. Well, what do you mean? What's wrong? I just found out who the dead man is lying back in our cabana. What? Now, let's leave here. Oh, wait. There's that doorman. He's pointing at us. Uh, Mr. Collins? Yeah? Uh, here is a note, an answer from Miss Turner. Oh, thank you. What's it say? Uh, that part of the show must be over. She wants us to meet her right away at the Casino del Toro on Flora Street. An out-of-the-way place like that? Come on, you just keep the handle of the briefcase clenched in your hot little fist and be quiet. But, Greg... Quiet! And a happy wedding night to you, darling. The Casino del Toro was in a very sordid section of Mexico City. As we pulled up in front, it had begun to rain... Fix the horn. Only take a second. Run into the doorway of the casino. Oh, Don't Greg. stand there. I can shift the hood myself. Hurry, Greg. You'll get soaked. Okay, okay. There we are. That does it. Now let's meet Miss Turner. The casino was a rundown, loathsome place. The man we'd seen on the stage with the bandaged face and broken arm came up to us. Miss Turner is waiting for you in that room to your left. All right. Mr. and Mrs. Collins. That's right, Miss Turner. Uh, close the door, won't you? 
We're terribly glad to see you're still alive and well, Miss Turner. You've been very helpful, Mr. Collins. Sit down, won't you? This is Mr. Monash, our violinist. How do? Your note was extremely interesting, Mr. Collins. Well, let me tell you the whole story, Miss Turner. When we were in our cabana earlier this evening... A man As Greg told our story, I looked around. Know who he was. The room was very he dark, was just two flickering bulbs. Miss Turner was seated on a Give small, discolored sofa. The violinist, oh, his face and arms it. bandaged, leaned casually against the, the wall, theater. staring at Greg. As Gray finished the story. Danger. Well, there's the briefcase, Miss Turner, with a million dollars in it. We've been terribly afraid someone would kill you, Miss Turner, before we got to you. I appreciate that so much. The last thing the man tried to say before he died was that the head of the ring wears a singing watch. Is that all, he said? That's all. And now, Miss Turner, when we were in the theater, we, I realized something. Really, Mr. Collins? You have a clue? Miss Turner, that man standing over there with his face covered up by bandages is not Desmond Monish, your violinist. Stay where you are, pal, whatever your name really is. I'll stand by this door. Oh, what do you mean? He's... A the... ring of smugglers who sneak Mexicans carrying dope in the United States has been using your theatrical company. Using my group? Yeah. Greg, how could they? Well, they probably wanted to get a man into the States, this time in a big deal. He's probably a courier for him, so they grabbed the real Desmond Monish, held him somewhere. This man took the violinist's place in your troupe tonight, after inventing a story about having an accident so he could cover his face. Are you leaving for the States tonight? I plan to, you but... see? In another few hours, this man will be stepping off a plane in the United States. But... but the briefcase... Payoff money. Probably part of one of their deals in helpless human beings. They're a vicious mob. They often kill the wetbacks if they think they're liable to be caught and start talking. They've slaughtered a very great number... This time, with all this dough to get into the States, they wouldn't trust an ordinary wetback. They picked our boy here. Get away from that door, Collins. Don't be a boy scout. I see, Greg. The real Desmond Monish was held in our hotel. Tried to escape, grabbed the money, got stabbed, staggered into our cabana for help. We were the first door he could find. That explains everything but the singing watch. Did you say the head of the ring wears a musical watch? Yes. You mean, like this? On my wrist? She's... Look out! Monish has a gun! Stay where you are, both of you. I'm sorry you learned so much, Mr. Collins. We didn't plan to kill you and your lovely wife, but now you made it necessary. I don't get it. Della Turner... Head of the ring, Gail. The distinguished actress. You're dating yourself, darling. You used to be big. Then she was a washout. You get desperate for money, Miss Turner? Besides, maybe your once fancy name and your acting troupe was a great cover for a racket. Mr. Monash. Yes, Della? You better dispose of them now. We've very little time. Our plane is waiting. I wish you two wouldn't leave, Miss Turner. Oh, I'd love to sit and chat with you, Mr. Collins, but we're rather late. And you and your wife are much too well informed. I'm an expert shot. It won't be very painful for either of you. Go on, Mr. Monash. We're losing precious time. I said I wish you wouldn't leave, Miss Turner. Duck, Gail! He has a gun! Oh, the lights! Collins, shut them out! I can't see! At the door! Oh, it's the policeman! I will turn on my torch! Della, quick, the window! Greg! She's going out the window! Stop them! I'll get them! I'll get them! <laughs> Greg practically flew out the window, firing at Della Turner and Desmond Monash as he went. He winged Miss Turner in the shoulder and got a friend in the leg. Fifteen minutes later, we were all down at the police station. They locked up Della Turner and her crowd, and Greg and I thought we'd be hailed as some kind of hero and heroine. Instead, the friendly policeman read a list of charges against us. Greg was... Yes. Now look, officer, the basic civil rights... I am rights... sorry, senor. We appreciate what you have done, but you have also violated our laws. You knew the gentleman on the stage was an imposter, yet you did not report it. Yes, I told you ten times. I knew that because the corpse in our cabana had calluses on his fingers, the kind a violinist would have. Besides, the label on his coat showed he was an American. Then when they announced that Desmond Monish, the violinist, had an accident... And that other guy walked on the stage all bandaged up. I knew it wasn't Desmond Monish at all, see? Why didn't you tell the police? Because it didn't have anything definite yet. I suspected Della Turner, but I had to make a sure hand. 
And I wanted the police to show up while she was talking. Greg, you must have rigged the horn of the cab. It didn't go off by itself outside the casino. You made it jam. Smart girl. When I fixed the horn, I purposely did a bad repair job, knowing it would go off again and attract attention. It did. Along came one of your goo-goo-eyed gendarmes officers. Goo-goo-eye? Yes, yes, goo-goo-eye. That will make another charge against you, senor, insulting the police force. Greg, maybe you'd better be quiet, huh? Me? Quiet? I have a right to speak. You can't lock us up. It's a wedding night. You can't keep us in jail tonight. Can't we? Hey, cellmate. You across the aisle. Yes, Gail? Tell a fellow a secret, huh? What kind of secret? Where'd you get the gun to shoot out the lights in the casino? I took it from the cab driver when I knocked him out. Oh? Well, tell me one more thing. How about your assignment from the government? That's what I was going to tell you. I just finished it. That was it. The government asked me to look into the wetback problem down here. What? Nice of the violinist to walk in and hand me the case on a platter, huh? Or should I say, hand me the case in a brown paper bag? That'll do. I don't want to hear any more about the case. You know, there was a case in Boston... Quiet! Fine wedding night this is. Me way over here, alone. Sorry, chum, I didn't arrange the separate cells. Fine thing on my wedding night. Very fine thing. I... Greg... I've got an idea. Oh, what is it? It's based on the old-fashioned saying, money talks. Bribe him, Greg. Get him to put us in the same cell. It mightn't work. Why? Because we've been running around all night with a million dollars. But me? I have exactly a dollar and 49 cents. A dollar 49? You mean you left your money at the cabana? That's it. Well, well... We'll have to try it anyway. Yoo-hoo! Oh, officer! Yes, senorita. Oh, come here, officer. We want to talk to you. Moral of the story. Prices are very high these days, but you'd be surprised at what you can accomplish with a dollar forty-nine. <laughs> Footnote tomorrow for June Brides. If you're planning a honeymoon out of town, the jails in Mexico City are wonderful. Oh, just wonderful. In just a moment, we'll be back with you. We hope you enjoyed our adventure, The Brown Paper Bag. Be sure to visit us next time for another puzzling murder. For where there is crime and romance, there you'll find Mr. And Mrs. Collins. It's a Crime, Mr. Collins was produced in the studios of Hector Crawford Productions by Dorothy Crawford. Welcome back. Well, a fun start to the series, and definitely interesting as a first episode. The idea that this sort of mystery and mayhem uh, even starts with and um, and interrupts the honeymoon. So it does a good job setting the tone for the rest of the series. And it's uh, Greg is an interesting character in that he just becomes so totally businesslike. You know, as soon as this happens, while uh, uh, Gail is just trying to get back to the honeymoon. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, murderers will kind of interrupt things. All right, well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Bruce. Bruce has been one of our Patreon supporters since April, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Bruce. And remember, uh, join the uh, 
a great detective style up party uh, at ashira.greatdetectives.net tonight at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Mountain. And uh, that will actually be all for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Rocky Jordan. And then next Tuesday, another episode of It's a Crime, Mr. Collins. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.